Hi language learners. Today I'm going to share something with you that I'm really excited about. It's a free Chrome extension. It's called Language Learning with Netflix. It allows you to show two sets of subtitles at once. You can pause. It has a pop-up dictionary and lots of cool things that I'm going to show you in this video today. So the first thing you need to do is click Add to Chrome. Add extension and then it's going to tell you that setup is complete. Now you want to make sure that you open Netflix after you've done this. If you already have Netflix open, go ahead and close it and reopen it so that that extension can set itself up. So then we're going to navigate to Netflix and I should already be logged in. So I am going to search for a Chinese drama. I went ahead and paused the video so that we can go over some of the extensions features together. If you click at the bottom of the video, the player will appear. It has the play button, back 10 seconds, forward 10 seconds. You can adjust the volume and there's a toggle switch to turn the extension on and off. So when you're ready to go back to regular viewing, just go ahead and turn that off. Next is settings, which can be accessed here and also in the lower right hand corner over here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. To the left, you will see shortcuts. I went ahead and took a screenshot of that and printed it out. I'm going to keep it in front of me until I commit it to memory. You may want to do that as well. For translation language, you'll see that English is selected. However, if you're not a pro user, you don't really need to do anything there because it is referring to machine translation, which is a pro feature I'm going to show you in just a moment. The next thing you see is this red pro feature button. If you click on it, you'll see that for $4.95 a month, you can get a few additional features, including machine translations. You can save words and phrases and get subtitles for dubbed movies. One thing I had issue with is next to machine translations, it states these are closer in meaning to the original subtitles. They are more helpful for language students. I take issue with that because my experience with machine translation has been less than desirable. In fact, I just did a blog post about Google Translate in comparison to another machine translator called Lingo Cloud. In my opinion, Lingo Cloud is far superior. I urge you to check out the blog post. It explains why machine translators have an issue with Chinese. In fact, if you use Google Translate to translate web pages in your Chinese language study, there is a extension for Lingo Cloud. Here it is on my screen, Lingo Cloud Web Translation Extension. I encourage you to get it, although it is machine translation, which struggles with Chinese, this particular platform was created by native Chinese speakers and I think that's why it is superior to Google Translate. Forgive me for getting a little off track there. The rest of the settings here are pretty self-explanatory if you read through them, playback speed, what you would like to do on left or right click, and this user dictionary URLs. If you want to use a user defined dictionary you can do that it explains how that's not something that I think that I'm going to use in this platform but go ahead and check that out if you think it'll be helpful to you you can change the font size and that's pretty much it for the settings now I want to talk about what are perhaps my favorite features of this extension First is auto pause. You can see it's red, it's turned on right now. You can toggle it off. But what that does is while you're playing the video, it is going to stop after every set of subtitles. So here he said, I'm going to do an experiment in Chinese and it stopped for me to review the characters. And if there is any of them that I do not know, I can click on them and the dictionary will read them aloud to me and give me a definition. Let me demonstrate that for you. 
This is very helpful when studying. This star is how you save words, but since I am not a pro subscriber, it will not allow me to do that. The, I think perhaps this is one of the greatest things. The print button allows you to print both the Chinese and the English subtitles for later study. I absolutely love this. And one thing that I would do with Google Translate if I were a beginner, I would copy the Chinese, plug it in, and get the pinyin for myself. But be careful, if the word is a polyphone, a polyphone is a word that is pronounced in multiple ways, but the character looks the same. Sometimes Google Translate has a problem with that, so just keep that in the back of your mind. But this is just absolutely wonderful how you can print this. Let's wrap things up by looking back at the player. Here on the right hand side, there's a few more things you can do. You can jump to the next episode using this triangle. This will allow you to select a different episode in the case of dramas, which are usually multiple episodes. Here you can select the audio track if multiple are available and the subtitles that you want to appear. As you can see, this particular video offers simplified and traditional characters, which is nice. If you have a device that allows you to cast from Google, you can do that using this button. And the last one is full screen. I'm also going to link down below to some study tips that the creators of this extension drew up. I believe they're accessible through the instructions, but I'll put it down below so you can find it quickly. I hope you're as excited about this extension as I am, and I hope that maybe it gives you a little something to play with while we're all stuck at home. Stay safe, everyone, and see you next time.